Hello world, Joshua McLean here from 8 Bits to Infinity. Today we're talking with Sekiros, the uh, game jammer, game developer, works a lot in Godot, a uh, now a very well-known language, an language, it's not a language, game engine. It's a, it's a wonderful open source game engine that a lot of people have been using for jams and we're going to learn a bit about what he's done with that engine in his game jams. And we're going to see some of his games and hear a bit about his development process behind those. So, hype! Hello, Sagaras. Hi, Joshua. How's it going? It's going great. How's it going for you? Not too bad. Not too bad. It's great to be here. Awesome. It's great to have you here. Uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, right. So I'm a game dev, I guess. Um, I make games for game jams almost exclusively. Um, I've been doing games for about two years now, and um, yeah, I, I made some things more or less interesting, and yeah, I'm, I'm glad to show them a little bit off here. So originally I'm from Portugal, I'm actually from the, from the Azores Islands, um, and um, I've immigrated to Japan where I currently live and work, so um, I very very different time zone so right now it's uh, morning time for me it's waking up and uh, hoping the coffee uh, does its work and i can give proper answers today <laughs> well good morning to you <laughs> uh, uh, so what was it that originally got you into game development uh well um you know i've, I've started playing games when i was very young in a very very old computer called the zx spectrum that was sort of my my main um, gaming machine and and you know this computer was very very limited so you could only do some basic programming like the, the programming language basic and, and that was too slow to do anything meaningful um, the alternative was to do some assembler and because I was living in these remote isolated islands I couldn't actually get information on how to program assembler so I sort of given up on game devving very early on and just just you know just played lots and lots and lots of very very old games um after after a while the you know, technology came about it, it was always more or less 10 or 15 years later than mainland europe but eventually i got myself my hands onto a, a pc and there i could do a little bit of programming um, at that time, it was, I don't know, maybe a little bit late for that. So I was just basically playing mostly adventure games and strategy games. That was, that was sort of the thing for me. Um, I did a bit of graphical art. I, in fact, I used, I used to work for a, a graphical design company where, um, where I worked making, you know, uh, these big posters to place on football pitches and, you know, commercials. And, and, you know, th th this was sort of my focus a little bit into, uh, you know, graphical art and, and music, of course. I did a lot of music, but programming for games was really not a part of my uh, teenage years, let's say. And, and very recently, I've rediscovered game diving with, um, thanks to some, some tools that make it very, very accessible. Um, so far, I think I'm still learning, and, and you know, game jams have been a really good way to, to learn more and more about how to make games and how to make fun games, most of all. Awesome. So, what was it that uh, led you to discovering game jams? Uh, well, you know, if if I'm trying to make if I make a game, it's it's really not fun for me to play it on my own, and I. I um, I, I wanted other people to play my games, and that's still that's still my main concern. Um, so I found itch.io, I don't know, by accident on a Google search, and 
I, I, I just randomly joined a, a game jam, and this was this was a very interesting game jam because it was not like the typical game jams in in itch.io, where you know most of the game jams that you will have a voting stage where the developers or the public will vote on the games themselves, and then eventually you select the winner. Uh, this was a the, very similar to one of the game jams that you've organized. So they had judges. This one exclusively had judges, which were people who knew stuff about games and knew uh, knew and could very easily recognize good things and bad things about games. So I made a game for this game jam, and and then there was this there very very extensive video where four or five judges uh, would pick out all the good things and bad things about your game and I was I was hooked from that point on it was, it just uh, they they've managed to dissect my little game completely and destroy it totally and then I set about to make a new game that was an improved version of the old game the or it, it, it wasn't it wasn't a, a copy of the old game it was a completely new game but it tried to fix some of the stuff that the joint just pointed out that were that, that could be improved uh, and that was pretty much it. I mean, that was uh, uh, what made me want to play more games. And then, uh, this, uh, you know, on itch, you get the number of people that download your games. And I said, I, I have 10 downloads. It's amazing. 10 folks somewhere in the world played my game. I was very, very happy about that. So since then, I've been trying to make more and more jam games to get this, uh, to get people to play them, basically. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a very good point that you, uh... You just put your game out there, and you got some judgment, and you just improve on that. That, that seems like a really good way to just dive in on the thing. Yeah, it, it's. I mean, it, it's a very humbling experience uh, when when someone comes out and really, really destroys it. You can either be discouraged completely, and you, you just give up and do something else, or you can say, "All right, all right. So let's uh, let's look at this very calmly." These are the points, list them out and say, okay, how, how can I solve this? How can I solve that? How can I make it more fun like this or more fun like that? So every, every game that I make tries to improve a little bit or, a little, or one of the aspects of my previous games in one point or another. Uh, sometimes uh, are, these are technical details, like change the art in some way. Uh, sometimes these are design aspects, like make the puzzles in that way, or make sure you, you, you construct your game in a certain way. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it, game gems are a really, really good way to progressively improve um, uh, little by little. Uh, your game design skills, I guess, and also your technical skills, of course. But I find that in, in the end, the technical skills is something that you can learn quite a lot on your own. The design skills, on the other hand, you definitely need, uh, you need other people to play your game. And you need other people to play your game and complain about it so that you can improve a little bit. Absolutely. Um, you had mentioned uh, you had played some adventure games and things. Do you think there are any inspirations in your games from those? Or can you cite any other uh, specific games that were inspirations for your development and design? Oh, I hope one day that I can make uh, an adventure game that is in any way inspired by the, the ones that I used to play. Um, I mean, my favorite adventure games were the LucasArts games, games like uh, the, the Monkey Island series, uh, or, or Sierra games as well, and these were carefully crafted adventures. It's, I mean, these, these were entire worlds that were created by these folks, and they, they were brilliant. And, and I don't think I can, I don't think I can ever uh, uh, even hope to reach that level of refinement. I mean, these guys are incredible. Uh, you can you can go check out their talks at GDC. Uh, at the GDC vault and for sure I mean this is this these are incredibly creative folks um, that that made that made games that are fun and engaging um, so I, I don't know it's it's kind of hard to 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 do it so that's why that's one of the reasons why I never tried to do an adventure game um, 
I feel I'm I'm not re yet ready for it. But if I could, I would try to do something in the lines of uh, Monkey Island. Monkey Island series, series for me is uh, perhaps one of the best um, set of adventure games that, that that you can find. Even even today, I don't know how many years, 20, 20 years or thirty years after it's been made. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's definitely a great series. Definitely a uh, lots of humor in those games too. I really like the. A lot of adventure games pull out that humor. Um, I think that's a lot of the big part of the engagement. Um, yeah, there's you? also strategy games. There's, there's like iconic games like Civilization. And I'm talking about Civilization 1 and 2. So this was in the 1990s, the early 90s. Uh, these are also really, really complex board games that have been you know, transcribed to a computer game and, and improved upon. Uh, that uh, these that are also... classic Gandhi glitch, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was a big deal. Uh, as for the games that I usually make for game jams, I think the inspirations are the most recent, uh, mostly platformer games uh, or top-down view games. Um, games like, for example, Hyper Light Drifter are a very big inspiration. Um, games, uh, I don't know. Ori and the Blind Forest is still uh, is still a must for me to play every now and then. Um, oh, that's, a, that's a beautiful game. Yeah, yeah those are stunning, stunning games. Um, but it's, it's just, it, it, it's actually interesting that, that although the game is gorgeous, if you play for enough time, you kind of forget about the art the game and you just enjoy the gameplay so uh, you know th these games they achieve through gameplay something that uh, that it, it you, uh, you know you can't reach through art you can't reach it by by making very beautiful graphics you you, you can only reach it by proper design and, and care and attention to to all the details of the game some things from you know the, the 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 character motion to the way that the enemies respond to the way that the the levels are structured. Uh, these things you can't really you can't really learn by by going to art school or or music school or any of that sort. Um, in fact, I have no idea how can you learn them other than practice a lot. Absolutely. Um... So along those veins, do you have any uh, any general advice you would give to uh, a new game designer or someone wanting to get into game jams? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, uh, I don't consider myself as a very experienced game designer, so I can only talk from my personal experience. And what I think, what I think I would advise folks when you're when you're starting this is to to learn. Learn to look at your game the same way that players will. I mean, that, and this is a really hard thing, you know. If you work very hard and for for a decent amount of time on anything, you you stop being able to look at your or to find your own mistakes. So to do that, to find those mistakes and make the game better, you either play test it extensively, or or you just learn how to play your own game in a way that the, 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 the players will because uh, I, I mean players can be uh, incredibly smart or incredibly clever uh, in finding all the small little problems uh, all the small little mistakes that you've made and exploit that to the maximum or they can be extremely dumb and they can't find stuff because you you haven't made it clear enough so that's usually my problem <laughs> yeah. we all know that <laughs> I mean, it's it's not it's not a problem but it's not a problem of the player it's never a problem of the player uh, so my point of view is that all those problems come from the developer it it's your it's the developer's responsibility to make sure that those problems are solved before the game is put out um so and uh, at least that's the approach <clears throat> that's the approach that i get is to make sure that uh, the player will be satisfied in, in uh, satisfied while playing this game. It, the, the player will not feel like he's being cheated, like the game is fair, and there are no hidden corners that can be exploited. And 
obviously I fail all the time, all the time. Um, it's it's almost impossible for a solo developer to 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 develop uh, a good game in in the space of a week or, or even a weekend. And and that's actually one of the reasons why I rarely do forty eight hour jams. It's just because I simply can't test the game uh, enough. There, there is no time. The forty eight hours. Uh, are, are finished and you just finished your game you can't really test it and refine it to the point where where uh, players will not complain too much about this uh, uh, about the details of the game uh, and you know it's it, it's my biggest problem so usually my uh, my wife gets the the, the, the play testing ability and, and and sometimes she she will find those those errors. Sometimes she will not. She will often complain it's too hard or too easy, and I'll try to refine the game to adjust to those to, to those points. But uh, unless you have a, a bigger team of players and a varied team like people who play very well any game or people that are not very good at games, uh, they're just trying to have some fun. You can't really do it unless unless you have a lot of time unless you have a lot, a really a lot of time and be able to tune out of game devving and become a player again and enjoy your own game. So yeah, that would be my main advice. Just just try to be critical about your own, uh, critical about your own work uh, and, and try to, as much as possible, to look at it as if someone else is playing your game, not not yourself because you know all the details you know all the secrets and you play you, you almost find yourself playing the uh, playing the, the the game in the linear manner even if your game is non-linear you always play it in the linear way because you know the optimum path so it's it, it's hard to follow that way um and that's pretty much it well there's one more thing there's one more thing that i've seen a lot it's like don't be lazy. If you if you're if you're an early game dev, it's very it's very easy to go to the internet and find you know find the easy way to do this or find the easy way to do that. And, uh, see, some examples are uh, when you're overusing procedural generation, for example. That's that's a big that's a big uh, problem when people find oh I found this really nice level automatic level generation thingy. And I'll just put it into my game engine, and bam, you get you immediately get a level. And it, it it's really easy to fall into these traps, and really easy to say, okay, with this I can I can make my game in in five hours less time than I would otherwise. And you know, what I think is these these tools, these automatic generation tools, uh, procedural generation, auto tiling, and things. These are these are developed and used by people with a huge amount of experience in game development and it, they, they will refine it extensively to be able to uh, solve some of the problems that they want or they will use it you know they use it in a way that in uh, improves the gameplay i mean example is that cells for where the procedural generation actually improves the gameplay in a way so uh, trying to use this when you don't really know exactly what you're doing it's probably a bad idea you know but players can feel it. it the players can feel if the dev plays care and attention to all the details in the game even though even if those details are not obvious uh, the, 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 the the players can sense it and they can also sense when the dev just randomly throws stuff in the game and and that, that, that has no purpose or, or even worse if it, if if you're throwing stuff into the game which has no meaning so it, it it should not be there at all so yeah that would be the second advice that i would give to to folks starting out new don't go the easy way unless you really know what you're doing i think those are two very very strong points um in game dev in general uh i know a lot of people they uh they see these games that are made in a weekend you know and they think well why does it take so long to make an actual commercial video game and i think your points are exactly hitting the nail on the head with that because it's it's refinement and testing and attention to detail and it it seems like it's something that could be done so quickly but it requires so much time yeah it's not it's 
it's it's not an easy thing for sure um it and and you and that's one of the reasons why you see like four years development five years development in two games uh, e even if even this if this is like a triple a game th that's even worse because then you have a huge team of people and all of them have to to have this dedication to what they're doing which is usually the case yeah. and you go you go check out games like uh games from nintendo uh breath of the wild is is an, is an example of incredible attention attention to detail everything on that game was carefully thought out a very very large game as well <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah okay let's uh let's uh turn the page and uh start looking at some of your games and oh, cool. so first we'll check out demon versus demon uh let me just let me just read this out what you've written here. Oh. Demon versus Demon. Misfortune has led our hero to the depths of hell. Now he has to slay rogue demons to be able to remain in the world of the living. Created using Godot Engine and in the spirit of the GitHub Game Off Jam, the game and graphical assets are freely available. Uh, so if anybody wants to learn a bit about Godot and also check out these uh, these assets and music and such. We'll share a link here in chat. Um. You're so loud, Iris. Why you do this? I should turn those off for these interviews. That's, that's an idea. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, controls, pause, quit, interact, slash. Looks like you've got gamepad stuff set up here. Let me make sure my gamepad's working. You always have gamepad controls, and that's something that I really, really appreciate. Actually, I, I'm not much of a, uh, of a gamepad person. I, I've been, I spent all my life playing PC games mostly, and only recently I started, well, recently, maybe 10 years ago, I started using gamepads, and I'm, I still suck at it. I can't really play with a gamepad. I can't have the precision that I have on a keyboard uh, with enough. a gamepad. But I've, I've, I understand folks like to use it, and therefore I try to include it as best as I can. Yeah, I, I personally have kind of the opposite, the opposite experience. <laughs> I, uh, I was born with a controller in my hand, so when I started getting into PC gaming, I was, uh, I'm still pretty awful at basically uh, it's only easy. fair it's only fair <laughs> we All did right. we, i mean in 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 my island it was i mean it was very rare to find someone that could afford a a, a console and and the games we all oh. the, the scaling oh. i need to fix the scaling one moment <laughs> yeah. i also need yeah. to make it quieter cuz i don't think anyone can hear you right now it's cool that you know immediately that, that, that this is a scaling problem. Most folks just say, oh, the game is broken and give up. <laughs> yeah. But you can change the, I think you can change the executable of the game if you don't want it to change. I can, just... but th this is faster. This is fine. Uh, mixer up. Where is the game? There you are. You be a little quieter. There we go. Okay, we should yeah, be Yeah, it has the... Yep. So, I guess just tell us a little bit about how you ended up with this game. Yeah, so this, this game was made for the GitHub Game Off um, Game Jam. And at the time I, I joined it because I, I thought it'd be fun. I, I had no idea it would be as big as it, as it was. And in, it... It, they, they gave you a whole month of the game, which is which is, was awesome because then I could try and, and do it, do something a little bit better. So this game combines a lot of the techniques that I learned that year, and um, yeah, it it uh, just a word of uh, warning. This is this is a, a little bit gory, so there there'll be a lot of pixel blood in on the screen, uh, so. That's totally um, acceptable. We kill pixels. It's fine. Yeah, it's it's the the stupid story about a character who gets killed 
because he wheezes in the wrong place and ends up in the ends up in hell and finds out that hell is pretty much empty completely. It's been there's only a guardian there and the population of hell is one as you can see. So he the 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 guardian says that everyone left hell and everyone went to her to earth. Um, and therefore he has to go and slay the demons that ran away to, to earth to bring them back to hell. That's the idea. And again, I, I, this this one, this game in particular follows the example. I tried to recreate the, the humor that you see on Monkey Island games, for example. Uh, and it was funny. So I made the, the I made the basis of this game in about three weeks and, and then I needed to make some music for it and uh, I reached out to, to Twitter and I simply tweeted something like does anyone like to make music for this game uh, and I got an answer there's, there's this guy uh, jean Sepp, he uh, is from Canada so he composed all the, the music that you're hearing now the two or three tunes for this game um, and it was, it, was, it was excellent. It was the first time that I actually collaborated with someone else um, to make a game, and I think it turned out pretty well. The, 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 the music is very engaging, the, all the sounds. Uh, he made also all the sound effects, and he coded the sound effects into Godot, which was awesome because I had no idea how to do that at the time. It's always um, a nice thing when your audio guy can do that. <laughs> it was brilliant. I mean, he did, he did a huge amount of work in just a week. Um, so yeah, so the the idea with this game was to try a, a very a, a, a very specific mechanic. So I wanted your character to be able to uh, go out in the world, slay a bunch of demons, uh, and then to to be able to take their form. So like you have now. So if you come to a demon and you, you press the one of the keys, I don't remember which one, you basically transform into a demon. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. So you turn out, you turn into a demon, and that gives you different powers. That that basically allows you to fly like those guys, uh, or go into small places like some enemies in the future. That you'll find <coughs> further ahead. So that's basically the the game. So I made it a small map, and there you go. You died. Yes. You, you <laughs> should be online when you turn back. Um. So. That's that's the basic mechanic of the game. So you take the shape of your enemies to uh, to solve some puzzles, and that was it. So basically, the, the 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 great thing about this game is it allowed me to to do a lot of uh, practice a lot of different things uh, with Godot. Things like the the detail of the rain and how it generated, and the, the details of how the controls change when you're one enemy one enemy kind or when you're another enemy kind some things change of course uh, the player shouldn't shouldn't realize these details are happening but they're all happening in the background and it takes some it took some learning to to be able to do this um, what are the details I just had my head eaten off it's fine um, yes <laughs> <laughs> I noticed uh, you another... uh, like sprite lighting stuff here yeah uh so uh, this, this this was is actually an important detail so before i included lights the game seemed lifeless uh it it it, it, it doesn't need to be a very strong or prominent light but if you put just a little bit of light behind the player to highlight it on the screen it's a lot easier to find it if you have a mess of things going on in the screen at the same time um so yes, very very gory game. Also, there's composite animations. So, it, I mean, the things like you can't tell, but the legs of the player are one sprite set, where his body is a different sprite set, so that you can run and slash at the same time. I'd never done anything like that, so this is this was a good practice. For me. Cool stuff. Um... So, yeah, right now you're stumbling into one of the problems of the game. So <laughs> you reach a point now that you have no idea what to do. And I gave you no clues about this. So this is one of the problems of this game, uh, which I tried to solve 
in, in later games. So right now there is no indication of, of what you need to do to solve this issue unless you, for example, try to find a way to get into that box. Um, so again, uh, I had to learn how to do this, uh, which came after this game, not before. I can't get into the box. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, you need to transport, transform into one of the flying Monsters. Oh, okay. See, see, that's the problem. So if I'm not <laughs> here telling you, and that's also actually one of the issues with game testing. So if you're if you're play testing your game, or someone is play testing your game, and you're standing next to them, you can't resist telling them how to solve the problem. So you really have to move away, move away from the from the play tester, and then eventually come back and, and try and figure out what happened. Yeah, definitely. Uh, give them the game, sit back and shut up. That's what yeah, I was exactly. always told. Exactly. Um, I mean, one of the things that, that really helps is people people like you, that you, you, know, you will stream and review the game and comment about it, and especially be harsh about it. Be, be hard on the game and, and, and really, really break it down. And I... I know if you have if you have uh, worked on something and you're you're uh, you're proud of it and it's your little baby to have someone criticizing it can be tough can be hard um, but it's really important it really helps uh, folks like me to to try and do something a little bit better. So I saw that progress updated. Was that a checkpoint or a save point? It's it's a safe point. That's cool. That's definitely something you don't see a lot in uh, in jam games. Oh yeah, I spent some time trying to do. I, I, as I said, th th again, this is refinement of previous games where I had no idea that you needed to have a checkpoint, and that people might want to go, you know, might want to go to the bathroom, <laughs> and so you can stop the game and then continue later if you uh, if you um, if you need to. Uh, and and that those details are are they, they seem small, but they're not. The, the the player will enjoy the game a lot more. And in the end, even if even if they don't like the game very much, it, it maybe it's not their thing, or or, or uh, maybe the game is just bad. If you if you just include these small details, uh, people just feel better about it. Just feel a lot more um, accomplished uh, when when doing this game. Uh, they, at least, at least they're not. The, at least they're not going to go away with it, saying, "Oh, this is a really bad experience." I mean, they yeah. can say whatever they want about the game, but they're not. They're, they're not going to have a bad experience. So. Cool stuff. So, uh, any final thoughts on this one? Uh, well, you know, this this game was for the GitHub game, game off, and and I'm I'm one of the. It's not a requirement. It's a request from the game jam organizers is to make it uh, open source. So I did, I, I released the source of this game and all the assets. Uh, most of these assets, I made it myself. In fact, the only asset that I didn't make myself was these uh, flying bugs. So I, I just downloaded the sprite sheet off the, inter uh, the sprite off the internet and I animated it itself. So everything else is pretty much uh, free to use for any anyone that wants to, uh, to use them and learn how to to do games in, in Godot and well not very good games but reasonable games I would say. Well that's that's definitely awesome. I'm sure a lot of people will uh, appreciate learning from that. It's always good to see something workable that you can uh, experiment with a bit. Let's uh let's try the next one, shall we? Sure. Uh, crack shot uh, that's another open source game so yeah this one i made for one of tiger j's uh, game jams i think it was a, the first game that i made for a tiger j game jam and the theme of this uh, game jam was uh, theories you had to you, you had to pick a theory any scientific theory and uh make a game about it and 
I'm, I'm an electrical engineer, so I picked magnetism or electromagnetism as my theme because, you know, it's something that I'm very comfortable with. Uh, but, you know, it, 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 it's the, the, the theme itself is not the, the, the main point in this game. It, uh, the main point is it's, it's uh, reasonable, reasonably complete platformer or it's a small game, but it has all the elements that you need for platformer. So I, I decided to make this game also open source and and I've been getting some really good feedback both on on itch and um, um, and mo but mostly on on github where I hosted it and, and folks just use use the code a lot although although I must say that code wise this is really not a good example uh, Why would you I, say okay that? so that well you know there there's there's some folks who are really 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 good at programming and there are some programming rules that you're supposed to follow when you're when you're doing any software any any kind of software you need to organize your code in a certain way oh sorry this is uh, this is mouse and keyboard game sorry it's um, fine i can deal i'm going to suck but i can deal <laughs> uh so yeah i was saying there are some really important tools of coding that you need to use to structure your code to make it organized and and when i'm making a game jam i really don't care about that at all yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll just worry about making it work and once it once it works i might spend some time properly refining or like reorganizing the code and making it so that it follows all the all those rules but when i'm making a game for a game jam i don't care I, I, at all about uh, any proper organization of the code yeah that's, um, that's definitely a fair point i think uh that's that's one of the big differences when you uh talk about doing like asset packs and things because you really you really need good solid code if you're going to be sticking it on an asset store versus a, a game jam yeah absolutely i mean you need a solid code you need something that can uh resist uh, you know, you can resist all situations and everything. But for a game jam, you're just basically just making, throwing things in, in there and hoping that it works. Yeah. Uh, so, and and that's why I, I I will often open source my my games and I'll place them on GitHub and I'll try to put a warning saying, <laughs> use this carefully. Don't don't. Don't just copy it because it's going to break. If you don't, if you don't do exactly what I've done, it, it will definitely break. Um, and that's that's the case with this game for sure because it, it will it will break a lot. Um, if you if it's if it's placed out of any any other context, if it's placed in any other context that, that this one, it will for sure break. So this game is about this uh, little girl that uh, moves around in these platforms and shoots stuff. Um, it, 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 it's a funny concept. It, it's basically a platformer shooter blend. And um, the enemies have also the ability to shoot in any direction. Uh, I, thought, I thought that was fair. It wouldn't be fair if the enemies could only shoot uh, horizontally or vertically uh, against a, a player that can shoot on any in any direction um, so the the task of the player is to move about turn on on off these switches that move these magnets uh, or electromagnet magnets to be able to uh, solve the game so it's a very very simple very simple game but again it, it includes pretty much uh, everything that you need for a, a basic platformer um, so you can take this and expand upon it um, until um, until you have your own game if you want I like the uh, the look is really cool that's that's one of the things I uh, I complain about all the time in platformers you get these platformers where there's leaps of faith or things just off screen that you can't quite see that's that's pretty awesome yeah I, I do break that every now and then there's one point that, that you will not so yeah <laughs> there's one point where that is broken you're just about to get get there but yeah oh, usually hi. enemies will only act 
uh, if if they're on screen. Um, so that that's also uh, an important point. Um, yeah. Oh, another thing that I would advise new devs to do is to use ready-made uh, palettes for their games. Uh, so you know, picking a color scheme for your art is is a hard thing, and you really need to know what you're doing. Um, so going into going onto websites like, for example, Low Spec, they have a bunch of free palettes that you can that you can use at your uh, at your own will, and and using them for your game instead of coming up with your own palettes is a good thing to do until the point where you know how to create your own colors and, and color schemes. Yeah, that's, that's one of my favorite sites now is <laughs> Slow Spec. I don't do a lot of art myself, and I know that's a, that's a really hard thing. That you, I think a lot of people getting into art, they don't really think about, you know, there's, there's all that color theory behind just picking three or four colors even. Oof. Yeah. not necessarily an easy game is it <laughs> no it's 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 pretty tough um but the puzzles are cool i like these puzzles um was there any you said you uh you were inspired by electromagnetism but were there any game inspirations for these uh these lever puzzles or anything oh well uh i, I would say um what's it called shovel knight would be uh, a good point so they have a lot of these uh, level, these type of puzzles that you have to run two or three times until until uh, the thing works, until you can progress. Um, they they have excellent excellent level design. Um, and yeah, go play it if you want to learn how to make learn how to make difficult but yet accessible levels. Uh, it, it's always a problem to 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 design good level especially in platformers for me it's it's perhaps my greatest uh, difficulty right now i will i will spend a game like this i will spend maybe one or two days to do all of the code and art and then the remainder of the time will just be trying to design the, the level it, it's extremely difficult for me do you use uh, like any extra tools for designing a level or you just lay it out in the engine uh, I just lay it out in the engine. Um, are there extra tools? So if, <laughs> if there are, please let me know. Is there a tool that tells you that a level is fun? Is, is there is there a tool that level that tells you if it's fair or too hard or too difficult? Well, I do know uh, there's I mean, there's a a lot of people use like tile blockouts to kind of judge platformers as far as like jump distances and things, but. I mean, absolutely, you eventually need it in the game before you can really see if it works. Oh, I, for sure. I, w I would love to be able to use those tools. I, I really don't know how to um, to, to uh, estimate the difficulty of a, of a, of a level. I, I really don't know how to do that. So the only way that I really do is trial and error and lots of error. And then maybe once and maybe you get it roughly right. Uh, the, I made for I made a game for a game jam some time ago um, called Daisy Dangerous, and this game was extremely unbalanced. Like uh, the first two or three levels were much harder than the subsequent levels, so it was actually very disappointing because nobody could get through level three, and level four is a lot easier than level three. So that that game taught me a lot about. Uh, um, trying to compose a game that's not that's not or you know that's balanced at least it gets progressively harder and because at that that one was was horrific in the sense that yeah the first levels were extremely difficult the final levels were very easy but nobody got to play the final levels because they were in the wrong place so i had, I had to uh i had so many complaints about the difficulty of the game that i eventually i toned it down but even after toning it down a bit then it would still it was still too hard 
Um, I think you played it actually. Um, I should go back to your your vods and, and check out your gameplay of uh, Daisy Dangerous. And I think you also gave up at level three after <laughs> spending some time. Not surprised. After spending some time. With you. No, it's it's all right. I mean, it's obviously not your fault. It's mine. Uh, it, it's it's my responsibility for making a, a game that was so hard in the beginning that people just gave up. I'm so I've, I've, I'm. It's fine. I've, I've been struggling with myself to try and make levels that are uh, a little bit easier uh, at the beginning and then progressively uh, increase difficulty, at least for the majority of players. Some players will get through the whole thing and they, they don't even blink. Yeah. Uh, some players will be stuck in the first level because they they forget to, you know, things like holding the jump button to jump higher. That that's a, a detail that not everyone that does platformers knows how to do that. They, yeah. they, they, people just don't realize. Yeah, if I if in a good platformer your your jump should be, uh, you know, your jump height should be proportional to the time that you spend clicking the jump button. So uh, and people will just play it as as binary. Now, and uh, that's again that's a really small detail, but. If you don't realize it, and there's nothing there in the game to tell you that if you hold the jump button, you jump higher, then then you know you can't you can't guess it. Yeah, that's definitely one of the one did. of the core problems with difficulty for sure is uh, gamer knowledge, because a lot uh, you, everyone has their own set of experiences, and you have to like account for every single one of them. It's it's a, it's a kind of a magic trick, really. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, it is. All right. So that was Crackshot. You said that one was open source as well. Yeah, that one's also on GitHub. I don't see a link you, if, on here. Uh, because I probably forgot to put it. <laughs> uh, it if if you go to the link that you shared before the previous GitHub, I mean, it's my GitHub site, and you have like a ton of games there that are open source. All right. Um, or I can try and share it myself. Hang on. Uh, uh, I'll just share the, the general GitHub page and. Good idea. You're welcome to come in, join, play around, complain. <laughs> uh, hang on. Let me just uh, find you. Okay. So I'm just going to post it here. Thank you. So, everyone, uh, the stuff that, I'm, that I have there is pretty much free to go. Uh, the assets are usually under a CC license, and all the code is MIT, so the code is good to go. So you can use it, change it, copy it, sell it. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> do whatever you want. That's the the Godot's under MIT too, right? Yeah. That's that's pretty cool. Not only can you edit his stuff, but you can edit the engine behind it while you're at it if you really want to. Uh, good luck doing that. I mean, that engine is... <laughs> Didn't say it was easy, but you can. Yeah, that, you can, you can, absolutely. But you're probably better off doing your own stuff. <laughs> All right, so Cast Out, last game we're going to look at here uh, for the Weakness Week Game Jam. Because uh, you, was 3D what you decided your weakness was? Yeah, exactly. So I did this again for one of Tiger Jam Game Jams uh, a couple of months ago. And I'd, I'd never done anything 3D. Um, I never done anything that's not pixel art. So I had two choices: either I would do a high resolution 2D game, or I would take my luck and try to do something 3D. And I apologize immediately. This game has sound because I I simply had no time to put it in. It's fine. It means I don't and... have to adjust the volume or anything. <laughs> It was a massive struggle to get this to work. Uh, very, very difficult for me. But in, in, in the end, I got a result which is roughly satisfactory. You can play with the gamepad. Uh, and God, I hope it doesn't break. <laughs> so yeah, this, 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 uh, this was my first 3D game. It is uh, about this character who moves about and has to punch enemies uh, to find stuff. Um, I, 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 I use many of the concepts that I've 
used previously for um, platformers. So the, the controls, I tried to make them very, very tight um, and so that you, you feel like you're in control of your, of your character and you could actually uh, uh, do some platforming, although I didn't, I didn't try to do that. It's way too risky. Uh, now, platforming in these type of games is, is very difficult to do, right? So I, I decided not to. Um, and yeah, this is this was my first attempt at using though for a 3D game. Uh, I didn't share this one on GitHub, uh, and the reason for that is because I'm ashamed of it. It's it's really really bad. It's really stitched with together with Spit. Really, I mean, it's not it's not something that I would recommend anyone uh, looking at it. Um, but yeah, I used a bunch of different um, techniques. In this game, because I, I don't know how to do 3D models very well, so I used voxels instead. Because Magic of Voxel, fairly easy software to use, and and you can um, uh, you can very quickly do a model in this, in a way similar that you would do 2D art. So the character and the enemies and pretty much everything else, they're voxels. The the that I've just put into a, a, a website that has all these animations. Uh, that it will it will take your three D model and put in all these animations. So I didn't do the running animation, for example. I went to this Mixamo website, and it it just takes your model and sticks in the the animation. So it makes it possible to to get a very decent result without much of an effort. Um, but I actually had to modify the animations a little bit. Some th th there's a problem with some 3D games where uh, the the animations are usually too fluid. They don't feel snappy. They feels like your your character is always somehow floating. So I changed the animations by removing keyframes and 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 trying to make them more snappy, so that they don't feel it doesn't feel as much as a uh, a smooth. It, it doesn't feel as smooth as it would otherwise, uh, and that sort of gives you a little bit more of a, um, uh, a snappy feel to to every motion that the character does and the enemies as well. Um, and then I use uh, a different technique for the trees. For example, the trees are they're actually um, oh, what's it called? They're they're two dimensional billboards, uh, billboards exactly. Yeah. So. It, it looks awful if you only have one tree as a billboard. It looks just, just dumb. But if you have a bunch of them and you group them together, then it starts to look not too bad like you have over there. Uh, so that, that saved me the trouble of trying to model trees. Uh, and it's also less expensive computationally, so it, it ends up being, being not too bad. Yeah, the red one, the red enemies are nasty. Um, so... Yeah, this game was basically practice to try and make uh, something in 3D uh, for the weakness, because that that was and that is still my just me. Ah, um, oh, make making this game was really, really, really difficult. I have zero life. Been that way for a while. That's probably. Uh, a bug. I think there's a bug. Yeah, it's <laughs> definitely a bug. It, it, you you have three life, and it will. It's just forgot. I forgot to update it. Oh, yo. <laughs> um, that, so, so the two things that I pointed out when I originally played this was um, the shortness of the attack range and the amount of time it takes for these guys to disappear. Yes. I mean, again, these are things that I don't... I didn't really know how to do. Um, uh the the things like that things like the attack range things like the time that they take to to uh transform into your reward whatever reward you're getting after you're dying these are obvious problems that at the time i just i just didn't know how to solve <laughs> um it, it's not that i'm much better now but I, at least i recognize those problems um and eventually, I might try and make an improved version of this game. So I'm, I've been talking to some some folks uh, to to try and and get someone to compose some music for this game. Uh, and so we might 
do a, a an update upgraded version with proper music and maybe a second level uh we'll see we'll see how that works that but it's still a game jam game so i'm 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 i'm, I'm happy with the result I'm, I'm i'm humbled by how difficult it is to make 3d um but i think i'm pretty satisfied with this result but you did get the 3d working so that was a success um any any final thoughts on this one on on 3D and Godot or anything in general? Well, you know, Godot is is now becoming mainly a actually, so it's it's improved. It's come a long way since uh, since I started using it first. So it's now at a stage where it it can it still cannot compete with you know powerhouses like Unity or similar. Um, but for the, the the things that it cannot do, for me at least, are not relevant at all because I'm I'm not the, those things usually involve extreme levels of photorealism and extreme high quality in graphics, and I'm really not looking for that. The day that I'm looking for that, then then it will be important, uh, and then then I will need something um, either. Uh, more powerful than, than Godot, but for for this level of of uh, of graphics, it's it's perfectly capable of doing it without without any hitch, and it's capable of a lot more. But for more of for like you know things like Unreal are still not possible, not yet. Um, yeah, that's the that's that's the main conclusion that I have. As for continuing to do three D games, well, I should say that after doing this, I was to go back to 2D. <laughs> very, very happy. Such a relief. That's that's fair. Alright. I think that covers the games pretty thoroughly. Um, we're going to open up the floor for questions here, so if anybody has a question for Sekiros, be sure to uh, drop it in the chat. We will uh, pick out some questions. Let me get the music going again here. Um, I think we asked a question here. I'm not sure if that was a question. If you could clarify whether that was a question, we. <laughs> what was the question? All right, we have a question from Iris here. How do you manage to keep your games consistent? Consistent. Uh, what do you mean by consistent? Like consistent within the game, or to make all the games consistent amongst themselves? If it's the game, uh, oh, the art gameplay to fit nicely. Oh man. Um, usually, the, uh, I, I'll follow a very simple policy, which is to put uh, to try and do all the assets myself. Um, all the all the graphical assets, I'll try to do it by myself, uh, always. And uh, unless it's a real desperate case where I have absolutely no time, I'll use someone else's assets. Um, but I'll try to do them myself. And I've been practicing a lot, um, basically, uh, to try to try and have um, things like um, using the same size for the sprite sheets of all the characters. Um, and things like using uh, a well-defined color palette, these will these will really help. This will really help you keep some consistency. As <clears throat> as for the music, well, pixel art goes very well with uh, chip tunes, and therefore I, 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 I tend to try and use chip tunes a lot. Uh, the other thing, the other te technique for music development that I've used is simply to you know reach out and ask people to make music for you and then show them the game, make sure they understand uh, your message or what you're trying to do with this style of game. And usually they'll, they'll come up with some really nice tunes and, and, um, and figure it out, figure out um, how to fit the music into the game themselves. Just, just let the, 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 the good creative composers do their thing. I can definitely get behind that sentiment. <laughs> Um, okay, we got a question from Imma Good Boy. Why did you choose Godot? Very good question. Uh, actually, I, I I chose I started making stuff and I couldn't I couldn't progress very quickly. So I tried Godot 
by chance I found it somewhere on a on a on a Google search, and after maybe what two three hours, I had character jumping on screen and moving back and forth, and I was very happy about that. So ever since then, I just started using it. There's no particular. I didn't have a particular reason. I didn't go through a stage of selecting the best game engine, and the reason for that is that the type of games that I want to make, you can make them on any modern. It doesn't matter if it's Godot, Unity, Game Maker, whatever. You can make them. any of those two simple 2D games. You can make on anything. So there's no reason to use Godot. But the fact is, I'm very comfortable with it now. I I pretty much know uh, how to use it very efficiently to to do the things that I want to do. So uh, and and that's it. I'm sorry. There's there's no real. Uh, I didn't go through any super stage of searching. For game engines, you just picked one randomly and started using it. That's the truth. I mean, I think I think that's pretty fair. I think that that's the sentiment from a lot of people using tools. Um, I know that's the reason I use Unity. That's the reason I use FL Studio. You know, it's it's just the thing that you learned. It's what you what you know. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's that's, that's, no, that's fair. No other reason. <laughs> um, got one from Lash Ghost here. How do you usually schedule or manage your time when making games? What do you focus on and when? Oh, that's a, that's a really big problem. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, scope is a big deal. Um, uh, I, okay, so usually I'll start and I'll have a rough concept in my mind of what I want to do. I will uh, sometimes, but not often, write it down somewhere. Um, I mean, there's a, there was this game that I recently made, Samurai Sam, and there I made an actual design document. It was actually one of the first games that I made a design document where I describe what I want the main character to do, and then I'll go point by point on the stuff that I would like to include in this game. Uh, I find the design document is very useful when you're lost in your development and you have no idea what you need to do next. You always can go back to that document and say, okay, now I need to do this point and this thing. Uh, the the schedule itself, uh, I usually divide it into three parts. So I'll start, I'll, I'll always start designing the main character, and I can't resist, I have to do that. I'll start designing the main character because it's the most important thing in the game. Uh, if, if it's a, if it's a, a character-based game, like a, a platformer or a top-down shooter or whatever. Uh, so I'll start with that because it's it's the thing that the player will look at for the most amount of time and i will really really try to refine that as much as possible uh i will spend uh, uh maybe a couple of hours coding the, the the character and maybe four or five hours making the, the the graphics for the character the animations uh the characters that i have for example in samurai sam that one took me a whole day. That was a very, very extensive set of animations. Um, but generally, I'll start with that and I'll devote some time to that. Then I will work on the engine within the engine. So the thing that makes levels run, things like um, how to define all the collisions and how uh, how things will collide, will interact with each other, uh, all the uh, the basic elements of each level, like walls, rewards, and I'll create all of these things. Uh, first, I'll usually do art, and then I'll do code for them. And once I get that done, I'll go to the final stage, which is the level design. And that's when I will sit down and actually make some drawings to try and make some... Uh, sketch of how each level is going to look like uh, and what you will find on each level and then i'll implement that on the on the engine sounds good <laughs> uh, hopefully we... that's enough <laughs> we've got a question from twin ghosts how do you feel about cooperating with larger teams around four to six people for game jams or do you prefer to work alone with a composer or artist this is a really personal question in the sense that it it really depends on the type of person that you are. Uh, I'm the type of person that does do not like collaborations. I do not collaborate unless I really need to, unless like both people or both the uh, or all the elements of the team really have something to uh, give to the team. 
I will generally prefer to to work alone as much as I can. Uh, but this is my own personal, uh, 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 it's my own attitude, and it depends strongly on my personality. So if you're a very extroverted person, it's great to have a great team around. But I tend to find that uh, if you have too many chefs in the kitchen, you're not going to make something good. So if you're working on a big team, make sure that you have a strong authority figure, someone that actually knows or has uh, control over everyone else and, and knows where the game is going. Otherwise, person A wants to go one direction, person B wants to go a different direction, and the game is going nowhere. So yeah, that's that's my but that's my personal approach, and it's it's maybe not the most popular because collaboration and teamwork is a good thing. It is a good thing. It's just not a good thing for me. Yeah, I, I can definitely understand that. I've been on a few jam teams that uh that didn't even end up finishing anything because of that exact problem. Everyone had their own idea what the game was. There wasn't any cohesion, no leader, you know. So it's that makes sense to me. Um, We've got a question from I'm a good boy again. How long have you been making games? Uh, I started in early 2017. Uh, yeah, early 2017. So it's about two years, I guess. Two years. <laughs> Very quick. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, 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 as I said before, I started with the ZX Spectrum uh, and you could, I could get a character moving up and down. I, I did uh, graphical art design professionally. Well, I'd say part-time professionally. Uh, and, and then I moved to engineering and I stopped doing uh, anything related to game devving other than playing uh, for a long time. So I've rediscovered game dev two years ago and I sort of my childhood and, twi and uh, teenage years uh, uh, will to do something creative came about and then i started again awesome well i think that uh that about covers it for the questions here um it's been an excellent talk it's been it's been so good um we have a question we have a last minute question let's finish off on this question here you made your first 3D game in Godot in a game jam recently. How was the experience? How capable is Godot for a 3D game? I think you kind of touched on that a little bit, but maybe there's some more you could elaborate. Uh, sure. I mean, uh, okay, so the 3D game depends on what you want to do. If you want to do a open world, massive, hyper-realistic game, go for something like Unreal. Or, or if you want to tone down a little bit, go for something like Unity. For a very basic 3D game, or learning how to make a 3D game, Godot is a very good choice. But it's not going to be much harder or much easier than any other, you know, mainstream 3D game. Sounds fair. <laughs> All right, this has been this has been a great talk. Um, thank you so much for your time, Sekaros. I'm sure. No problem. It was... It's my pleasure. It was very helpful, very useful. For we had a lot of a lot of good points here about game jams and game development. We learned a little bit about Godot. Um, I think it's amazing that you're sharing this uh, open source stuff. I know that it's it's game jam code. It's a little messy. It's kind of rushed, but it's it's something that can uh, definitely help people get ideas how to do things. Um, so thank you, thank you very much for your time. Cheers, my pleasure.